The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and happy Thursday. Thank you all for joining us today. To our current customers, we are very excited to have you here and to show you our recent feature uh, launches as well as what's soon to come. We also have a very exciting announcement towards the end of our webinar regarding our longer term roadmap. So be sure to stay tuned to see that. All right. For those of you who are not uh, Smart Vault customers and maybe not as familiar with the platform, we are a secure cloud-based document management and document management and storage solution built for the security, compliance, and workflow needs of business professionals. Our What's New, What's Coming webinar is designed to show our recent launches as well as changes to previous launches and what's coming uh, down our roadmap. You'll have myself, Rachel Montana, Director of Marketing, as your moderator today. And very happily, we have our Director of Product, Daniel Fritz, who will be diving into the specifics of some of these feature launches and showing us a couple of demos. So let's talk about what we'll be covering today. We'll take a look at um, MPS survey. We will have another round going out before the end of the year. It'll look a little different, so we'll talk through that. We also have quite a few uh, feature launches and upcoming launches, so Daniel Fritz will dive into that. We have a few upcoming events before the end of the year, um, so we'll go through that with you. If you'll be attending any of these events, we'd love to meet you in person. We'll wrap it up with a couple of poll questions, and then we'll have a Q&A. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so we'll start with the NPS survey. Uh, this is a survey that we use to send to our current customer base, and it gives us a pulse on how happy you are with your Smart Vault experience. Um, the responses that we've received from these surveys has launched a lot of business decisions on our site, so we do take a, a very strong look at that. We'll have another round going out before the end of the year. It'll look a little different. Historically, we've sent that through an email. Uh, this time, it will be actually in the Smart Vault platform itself, and it'll look much like this. It'll be a slide out that comes out, asks you, uh, you know, whether you uh, refer Smart Vault to a friend, lets you answer the question why. Uh, very easy to use. Again, your feedback drives decisions here, and so we really appreciate you taking the time to give us that feedback. Absolutely. All right, I want to take just a second to remind everyone of Smart Vault's mission statement to make people productive and happy. So, in an effort to stay on that path, our development team has created the Smart Vault Ideas portal at ideas.smartvault.com. This is where our customers can vote on product enhancements, uh, view what other customers think uh, as far as top ideas that we can contribute and then uh, also lets you contribute to our future roadmap. And we've had quite a few heavy hitting features stem from this, uh, such as email capture, archive vault, shared folder indicators, and request docs. So please take advantage of that resource. All right, now I'll pass things over to Daniel to jump into the more exciting topic of future releases. And awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. Can you hear me okay? Yep, absolutely. All right, fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start off and talk through some of those most recent features. Can you see the what's new, what's coming and jumping into archive clients? Yep. All right, perfect. So one of the big features that we've released in the last couple of months was the archive clients features. Now this is available to use from our desktop application today. For any of you guys that are utilizing one of what we call our structured plans, and that's the ones that have clients involved with them. So the way this works is utilizing your connected desktop application. You'll simply find the client of yours that is no longer working with you or you need to go ahead and archive them. You'll simply right click and choose archive client as one of the options. Once this goes into to fruition, it'll bring up a little modal and a pop up that'll ask whether or not you want to keep their access. And that's really important. So if you are cutting ties with this client, completely and you don't want them to have any access, you can remove them uh, from having access to any of your folders. Now, secondarily, if the person is just leaving, uh, there's a potential that they might come back, that'd be really awesome. And you might wanna just allow them to stay having access to those files and folders that they've had access to for the last time that they've been your client. Now, 
within the web portal, you can actually come back and restore them as you see in this screenshot that I have right here. So I can restore clients to active stage where they'll show up in all my searches, they'll show up in all of my uh, screens and whatnot. But most importantly, even if you make changes to their folder structure, their design, those customers will be kept up with all of those changes. So when you restore them, it's like they never left. All of the changes that you've made over that last X number of years would actually still be applicable. So really excited for that. There's going to be a sneak peek of the new client management. I'm giving kind of giving that away right now, but we're going to see the new client management where you can actually do this in the web as well. And speaking of the UI improvements that we've done over the last several months in the last several of these what's new what's coming webinars we've talked about how we're changing those ui pieces earlier this year we touched on your guest experience uh, we added some functionality around docusign we've now as many of you guys have seen and experienced we've changed the files and folders we added request docs now the next couple of phases that we're going to be looking at is like i mentioned the client management that i'm going to be walking through today but also some activity based information the account settings and a lot of your employees as well so we're really looking forward we've had a really good uh, feedback on these these screens and i hope that you guys are continuing to enjoy what we're doing here so this is kind of ongoing and it's applicable to all the plans so as we add more functionality we're making sure to keep up with you guys so Lastly, we talked about what was coming with an email capture Outlook plugin. And so I have a couple of screenshots here. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you guys how this works firsthand during this webinar, because you can see here, it's what's new in October. This is within the next two or three days, you guys will be able to access this, download it and start use a lot, utilizing this awesome new feature that we have. So with that, Let's go ahead and jump into that. I've got to adjust whichever screen I'm showing here. Give me one second. I'm going to stop sharing just for a second. And what screen can you see there, Rachel? Still this one down here, right? Yeah. All right. We will just use this one. That is perfectly fine with me. All right. So as I move this over, you can see that I have my actual Outlook here. So up here in the top right, you'll see I have a couple options. There are actually four buttons in this world. A lot of you have actually already utilized our Outlook plugin of today. This is a complete rewrite. So we took all of the functionality that the existing Outlook plugin had, and we rewrote it in top of the line, up-to-date technology and frameworks. And what this allows us to do is it's a lot more reliable. It is a lot faster. And we were able to add some more functionality on this. So many of you guys will be familiar with being able to upload emails, upload attachments. All of that functionality is still capable to be to being done. But the big addition here is the ability to sync emails directly into SmartFall. So we're going to start here with an email that I sent myself this morning. And so if what I, as I look at this in my inbox, I want to go ahead and sync every email that I get from myself. And I can choose this large button here. And I have a couple of different options here. So I can see, see, I can choose to sync all emails to and from the sender. Now I have quite a few Smart Vault accounts being the you know, product leader here, but I'm gonna choose this My Tax Man because I know that I have a couple of vaults in here for myself, as you guys can see. But I'm gonna put this into maybe this specific Samantha. And you can choose either correspondence, emails. You get to choose which location that this is gonna dive into. So I'm gonna drop this into the Samantha Fritz vault for emails. And I'm gonna say, I wanna sync all emails to and from this sender. And what'll happen is when I sync this, it's gonna come up, it's gonna do tell me a couple of things. First, it's gonna say that it was successful. It's gonna add a category on there so that you can visually see in your inbox which ones have been synced. And if I go ahead and reply to this, my question here to myself, are you saying that all emails a user receives can automatically land in the client's correspondence folder. I'm gonna change that to emails folder. Yes, you get to choose the folder it lands in. And now that's really important because I'm sending this in real time. So what's happening on the back end is that we have already synced this email, but at the same time in that sent folder, that email that I just sent back to myself is going to land in that folder as well. And we'll see that in a few moments. The secondary one is a, easier way of uploading a single email. So Ashlyn, uh, one of uh, 
Rachel's team members, asked if she could send me that document. So I'm going to sync instead of choosing the all emails from Ashlyn because that's not really applicable. I'm going to sync only that specific email. I'm going to again choose my location, choose my clients. Ashlyn's last night last name is Bowles. So I'm going to go ahead and just find Ashlyn in here. And we did not add her, but that's okay. We're going to oh, oh here she is. I can I can read guys, I promise. And we're going to put that into Ashlyn's emails folder. And so here you'll see that the same exact experience occurred. But the difference is, is that it's a different color. So you can tell a difference. There's a visual cue and a written cue that's going to tell you whether all of the emails from this person are being synced or just this individual one. So hopefully you guys are starting to see how easy this is. This is a simple click, choose where you want it to go, and then you're done. Now the last bit here is I had a conversation with a couple of my team members and my wife here. So the last option for capture is something that we call conversations. So here, Himanshu, who many of you guys know, he's been here forever, uh, he would like to talk about it. He thinks that the current plan to showcase this feature today is going to be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and sync this conversation. So let's have a little discussion about that conversation. The way I organize my email on a day-in, day-out basis is by subject. And so you'll see here, all of these are linked together. And that's how this conversation works because at the underlying folder level of Outlook, everything has a conversation ID. And you'll see that whenever we upload this. So as I go into my tax man, I'm gonna choose again my clients. Maybe this is a corporation like Acme Brick. So I'm gonna choose Acme Limited. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop again, put this into the emails folder. Now, the way this works, you'll notice that I'm choosing this one that was not the very first one that Shania had sent me. I'm choosing this one specifically. And the reason for that is that the way that all of our syncs work, especially the ones that are the sync all, like you saw down here, and the sync conversation, these will work based upon the time of which you choose. So because I am choosing this one, you'll see that it says Smart Vault ready to sync on these next two. That means that this one has been synced in and it's green, so it's indicating it's a conversation but these next two are going to go ahead and sync as well. Now you'll notice that the original one that Chenea sent me, I chose not to choose that one and that could be an arbitrary reason, but what's going to happen is that as we continue this conversation and we go back and forth a couple of times, then those are automatically going to be syncing. And that way, all of the emails in this conversation get landed into that Acme limited location. You see now there it automatically happened. Now what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and pull up my connected desktop. So a lot of you guys are familiar with this experience. This is the desktop application in order to access these things. So what I'm going to go ahead and look in. I am making sure that I am in the appropriate account, which is my tax man. I'm going to go ahead and look for that limited there. Just quite sure where that one is. Let's refresh our clients here. There's Ashlyn. So if you'll notice here, I've got the email document, which was the email subject line. Let me move this over slightly and close out my launch pad. So the title was document. And then you'll see this code at the end of here. That's that conversation ID that I was mentioning earlier. As I go into Acme, maybe it was Acme 4. I'll have to check on that. And we put the last one into Samantha. And you'll see here I have examples of tons of different emails that are syncing in there. So you can see that the most recent one, 1021 Outlook sync all, and you'll see that there's a reply in there. And that's because I actually replied to myself. Now you can open these natively within Smart Vault as well, which is really powerful. So as I can see this, it's going to automatically open in the native location. Or if I want to go ahead and open this one in the web portal, that can happen as well. Let me adjust a couple things up here, and I'm going to go ahead and log in to my Smart Vault through the portal. I'm going to take this time as I put in my password and such to remind you guys that you can always ask questions throughout this, and we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of this. So as I pull this down, you can see that I'm going directly into this view. Same exact email, but viewed in the web as well. 
This is really powerful, guys, especially if you are going on vacation, you can give access to your email folder so that the person who's covering for you can see all the different conversations that you've been having without having access to your Outlook. So overarchingly, super, super powerful. I hope you guys are, are really excited, as excited about that as, as we are. So let's jump in to what's coming. So that's, like I said, that'll be available e either later today or, or by Monday of next week. You, everyone on this call will be able to access that email capture technology. So let's talk a little bit and change gears about like what's coming in the next couple of months. So I've mentioned it a couple of times. I've got that client management UI update. This is gonna be huge because it's bringing forward a lot more information as you guys will see when I've walked through it. But it's also making it just so much easier to learn. And it's a, it's built a lot more modern, a lot more like the everyday websites that we use in our everyday lives. So being able to add a client is a big blue button versus a tiny little plus sign in the corner. And we don't, you know, that's a little bit harder to train because like, yes, once you get it, you know where that's at. But if you have new staff and you want to get them rocking and rolling in, in Smart Vault really quickly, it's a lot easier when the UI helps them do that. So just to kind of give you some before and after experience there, large tiles that don't bring a whole lot of value switched over to tiles. You can still get directly to their vaults, but most importantly, we're bringing forth their client types and their client IDs forward to really, really help. Better to navigate, excellent workability. You guys are gonna love it. Certified Vault V2. So if you'll think back about two of these what's new, what's coming, we had talked about Certified Vault, and this is a way if you are a financial services institution, you, you process loans, mortgages, you know, monetary contracts. We have brought forward this idea of authoritative copies in each chattel. So what we've done is that we can get authoritative copies into Smart Vault utilizing our relationship with DocuSign. But what we're doing now is actually migrating documents that you already have and moving them into Smart Vault. So this is looking around the November, December timeframe, and you can actually get those authoritative copies out of one system and into another. One. Or if you have paper authoritative copy documents, this is actually a process to bring them into the digital world, meeting all the uniform commercial code requirements. So I know that that process uh, is, is very detailed, but there's it's a very quick process in order to sign the legal paperwork and actually pull those from your local machine up into Smart Vault. Can I just jump I in for a second and say sure. I do see a lot of questions coming in. They look great. Um, we do we will have a Q and A session at the end of this, so we will be addressing those questions and keep them coming. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, I know that one of the big sticking points were some notification issues. We have made changes to make sure that that doesn't happen. But what we are going to do is we are actually in December going to revamp this entire experience. Where we're going to be migrating away from a homegrown notification platform into the AWS platform itself. And Rachel, honestly, we were going through this. She asked us, she's like, what does that, what does that really mean whenever we change and move to their foundation and such and their AWS way of doing things? Think about this, guys. You know, you see the commercials when you're watching sports, you're watching TV, all of the AWS, oh, this was powered by AWS. And what AWS is, is just big data centers across the world and they have tons of compute power. And what they have done is that if you move into AWS, you actually have access to their toolkit. And whenever you have access to their toolkits, you can utilize things like sending emails instead of relying on your own technology that you guys have built, you can leverage theirs and say, hey, this is the best way it works with AWS. And so that's exactly what we're doing. We are tr transforming our emails not to you know, just the smart vault scale, but imagine this, you guys get tons of emails from Netflix and all of the other big companies that you see on AWS, all of them are using that same technology. So we're really, really excited about getting this. That way we are not scaled for the next year, we're scaled for the next 20 years with the AWS revamp. Coming in the first part of the year, just in time for tax season, it's gonna be request docs version two. So today, I've seen a lot of people be really innovative with how the request docs is used. And they'll ask questions, but not make it a required. And that way, you don't have to upload a file. And you can just put it into the comments like, hey, did you get married? There'll be an upload file button. And then there's you know, text there. We want to actually make it to where you guys can have a questionnaire itself. 
that way were there any changes in dependence yes and then you add your comments below or did you have any child dependency care expenses and then you can just respond and type out the oh i had this that and the other thing so adding these questionnaires to request docs allows a lot more communication and workflow to your day-to-day -day. so as we provide you guys this we'll be able to have live edits on those request docs so hey if you sent one and like oh i misspelled something you can go in and edit it in real time all of this is going to be applicable for all those guys that are using request docs today and have those clients so we're super super excited about that capability so the moment that i've been waiting for essentially all day is giving you guys a sneak peek of our new client management in action. This just for clarity is running in what we call our dev system. So this is not publicly available quite yet, but it is what's coming. Let me bring it down here. And so welcome to Smart Vault. You'll notice a few of the revamped terminology here on the left side. I'm gonna jump into the client management section. Oh goodness, I have to sign out and sign back in real quick, guys. Give me one second. My apologies. I let it, I talked too much in my previous uh, slides. I was already logged in on this one, guys. <laughs> so let's jump in over here. All right. So let's go attempt number two to dive into my Dev One system. Now, these, just to kind of talk about that AWS platform and everything, because this is going to take a second. We're running the entire snap, uh, the entire snapshot of Smart Vault running. We're running that on a single machine in AWS because all of our development, everything that we do is in AWS to make sure that we are following and keeping all of your stuff secure. Okay. So is and that while, while that's opening too, so this is the sneak peek of the client management UI, but um, after this, I promise you guys a big announcement for our roadmap uh, for the future. And that'll be right Absolutely. after this slide. Awesome. All right, here we go. So diving in i clicked client management you'll notice that it's still in the same uh look and feel i can look and search for clients one of the big changes that we brought on this page is we reduced the noise that was happening so we don't have those really big colorful tiles we made those tabulature but one of the big things is, is when you have client ids especially those that are coming from lacert and pro series your client ids will be right here within the first purview which is which is absolutely stellar I can still go directly into say the files and folders by clicking the vault. So it takes me right there. If I navigate back over here, I have the ability to go into a new and improved client detail page, including the, the client, excuse me, the contacts themselves. And so since this is a corporate entity, what we're actually adding is the capability of assigning a primary contact. So let's see what that looks like in action. So if I add a new client who is an entity, and I'm gonna say that they're a corporate. I can put in a client ID here. We're just gonna do Montana one, two, three, and our client is gonna be Montana LLC for Rachel Montana here. So you can add an email and a phone number here if you'd like, or you can actually add contacts. And so in this case, I'll set her as primary, Rachel Montana. And I'm gonna go ahead and add an email and phone here for rm at smartvault.com and we'll put in my cell phone number. So on a normal basis, what you could do today is you could just hit save client and then you have to go send them a request doc. Oh, you can go create some engagements. Oh, I have to go invite them. But we're gonna change the paradigm a little bit. Let's go more actions. Oh, I put the email in the wrong place. We'll put this as Brits at Smart Vault here. There we go, more actions. I can go ahead and add an engagement. I can send a request doc. Remember, this isn't a dev environment, so it may not be completely working in this realm. But most importantly, let me switch this over to a person. There we go, because I know this side worked. There we go. All right, I will have to save on that one, but most importantly, during this more actions, you can actually send a request doc, add the engagement and invite the client all at the same time. So if you have a template in a request doc, if you're an accountant and you want those documents from your just your new client orientation documents, you want to go ahead and create that folder structure for their engagement for the next tax season. And you can go ahead and invite them 
all of that can be done within about seven or eight seconds of loading this out, which just saves you guys a ton of time. So let's jump back over here. One of the other cool things that we have is the ability to uh, assign employees in mass, which you can do today. It's a little confusing. We're changing that UI. But one of the most important things that I want to bring out is that if you utilize the filtering, and I only find my corporate accounts here, which I've got 29 showing, I can actually add an engagement to all. Now, some of you guys might be saying like, well, today this is going to still give an engagement to everybody. We have actually fix that to where if you have a filter running and you add engagement to all, it's only going to be those users that are in this list. And that is really powerful. And oh, by the way, this is going to be really impactful for some of you larger clients, uh, customers of ours, the export out to CSV, you can export an entire list. And this is kind of getting us into that starting realm because it lands in your smart vault as an Excel file that you guys will be, or excuse me, a CSV file that you guys can open. So we're super excited about this. This is looking to come out in mid part of November, right before Thanksgiving. You guys will have access to this and we're really, really looking forward to it. And so with that, we're gonna talk about the sneak peek. I've, remind me, Rachel, do you get to talk about the sneak peek or do I get to talk about the sneak peek? You get all the good stuff. I get all the good <laughs> stuff, I love it. All right, so some of you guys who follow us, our parent company, Get Busy over in the UK, recently got us some really cool things. So what we have added is we actually acquired two companies yesterday. And so we have quoters.io, if you wanted to take a look at it, and dockdown.io. Both of these guys are dedicated to the Smart Vault family. We are going to be integrating them in by the end of next year. Like I say, here's a big sneak peek to our next year's roadmap. But what this allows you to do is build out quotes. So you guys can send that quote out two people before you even sign them up and doc down is fillable pdfs so you can have a set of requirements think request docs here if you have a new client orientation we're going to connect that into where all of their tax documents and everything are going to be automatically filled out for you so we have tons of whiteboards and and talking about this these are awesome companies they're just needed that extra boost to really get them into the forefront. So we're bringing you guys fillable PDFs, a quoting tool that's all native to, to Smart Vault. So we're really looking forward to those as well. So thank you to our friends at Get Busy for providing these things to us. And especially for you guys, we can't wait to get this technology into your hands. So with that, I believe I'm gonna pass it back over to you, Rachel. And you will take over. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'm looking forward to the questions and the polls. So it's all on you now. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. I okay, can see perfect. It. So wanna just go over a few things we have coming up through the end of the year. We will be at two trade shows. Actually, the first one is next week, Scaling New Heights in Fort Worth. We will be at booth number 72. If you plan on attending, please take the time to stop by, say hi to our team, grab some Smart Vault swag, register for uh, an Apple Watch, um, and just let us have the opportunity to meet you in person. We'd absolutely love that. And our own Daniel Fritz, Director of Product, will be at our booth. So if you want to talk to the uh, you know, director yourself of product, then he'll be there. So Look really uh, encourage you guys to stop by. We'll also be at FICPA Florida CPA Summit in Davie, Florida, November 9th through 10th at booth number 11. So again, if you plan on attending, please take the time to stop by and say hi. We do have a few upcoming webinars co going on as well. Uh, we do have a series dedicated for our current customers on getting you prepared for tax season. Um, we will be sending out a follow-up email with the recording to this webinar, uh, the slide deck and the URLs to these webinars if you'd like to register. We do have a few webinars coming up as well for our non-customers. Um, again, getting you ready for tax season, but also showing you how to use your tech stack to make your uh, time as efficient as possible. All right. If you need additional assistance, please remember to reach out to our in-house support team at help.smartvault.com. We do have uh, reps in our Houston and UK offices that are more than happy to help you out. Uh, if you're not a Smart Vault customer and you have some questions and would like to learn more, please go to smartvault.com. 
uh, fill out the demo form and one of our product specialists would be happy to help you out. All right, now we'll uh, go ahead and launch just a couple of polls. Okay, so the first one, on a scale of one to five with five being the best, what do you think of our new feature request docs? Love to hear your feedback there. Okay, give it a couple more seconds. I still see some votes coming in. All right, great. Thank you for your participation there. And now we will launch poll number two. All right, and while I launch this, I'll let uh, Daniel talk a bit about our DocuSign subscription since that goes along with the question. Yeah, absolutely. So the DocuSign subscription is available to any of our clients today. If you have an account that has access to DocuSign, which is a majority of you guys and anybody signing up new will also have access to it. This is a per user per month cost. You have to be on an annual plan to utilize it, but what it allows you to do is just use as much as you need and you don't have to be keeping track. Oh, how many do I have? Do I have enough? Because that's one of the biggest feedback items that we got as product is, hey, you know, I'll be running through, I'll be sending a lot of signatures out and then all of a sudden, smart models stop me from doing it because I have run out of envelopes. Then I have to go through that process to go purchase more envelopes. I wish that there was a way to just have what I need and I just pay for that. And so it is subject to our fair use uh, policies. So you can't use thousands upon thousands of signatures. But the thing is, is that with that, you have a capability of just using what you need. So in this case, a lot of you guys uh, will have access to our subscription. And what we want you guys to do is we really encourage you to utilize that. It makes your everyday workflow much smoother. And we absolutely uh, look forward to having you guys join that. So I, I hope that all of you guys are planning on utilizing our DocuSign subscription. Perfect. All right. And so now we can jump into Q&A. All right. So I, I have actually been taking the time to review a lot of these things. <laughs> Uh, Lewis had a lot of great questions that are seeing around the email capture feature. So let me kind of talk around some of those things. It is only on the Outlook EXE version. We're not quite in Office 365 yet. Um, any plan can utilize our Outlook plugin. That's regardless of what plan you are on, you can have access to this. And it does not work with G Suite quite yet. Um, as far as prior history, remember what I said, whatever date that you choose, any emails from that moving forward. Now, there is a caveat there, guys. This only works in the inbox, and it works in the sent. So, I mean, you guys noticed that my inbox was pretty clean. I dedicated a bit of time to do that this morning, but I utilize a lot of folders. So, it's not going to go through every single folder. It's only going to take actions on those in the inbox. My recommendation would be just start using it. And moving forward, and if you come across an email, use that one email thing that I did with Ashlyn's email to get those in there. Let's see, in response to the conversations, does that come in as a bunch of different emails? Actually, no. Uh, when you utilize the conversation, we use our versioning tool. So you will only see one line item in there. So it makes it really, really great. Let's see. The features for Archive Vaults will migrate into the portal. Let's see, we've got a couple of pieces of feedback on the connected desktop. We have some ideas of how we wanna adjust and change up the connected desktop, but I'm gonna save that for future me and future what's new, what's coming webinar. So you guys will have to keep on joining and spending time with me and Rachel. All righty. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm kind of reading through these pretty quick. Uh, another great question here is, if the email is subsequently deleted from Outlook, will it still be accessible in that synced folder? Absolutely. We're saving the actual .msg file itself. So any attachments that were in that email are also saved within that actual file, which is really, really powerful. All righty. I'm going to continue to scroll down here. Where do we I'll, get the I'll, added? I'll jump, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go I'll ahead. Go ahead. Answer one. Uh, Steven's asking, when will the webinar for getting ready for tax season be? There will be a couple of them, and I'll send out the link, and you can register for whichever ones you'd like to attend. 
great. Awesome. Uh, and the email feature do anything? Does it update automatically? Once, once you, you have to download the new version of it, because remember, we completely rewrote it from the ground up. Uh, you'll get an email notification from our marketing team with instructions uh, on how to do that in the coming week or so. And so that'll be really exciting. Let's see here. Um, yes, there will absolutely be a recording sent out. Uh, if you want help with those, uh, just like uh, you can go to help.smartball.com or reach out to our wonderful support team members. Honestly, they are sitting not even 50 feet from me. They are the best. They are the greatest human beings on the planet. They're there to help you and make sure that you guys are really successful. So uh, for those of the real quick, for those that are that don't know what a structured plan is, that just means that you have the ability to add clients like I showed in the demonstration. All right, sorry, um, tons, tons of yeah. questions coming in. Take a couple, Daniel, Rachel. Daniel Wolfrey, along the lines of the one you just asked, I see one that says, how do we know what plan we are on? I was told I have to upgrade uh, my plan at a certain date because tax prep was no longer offered. How would they know what plan they're on? Uh, you can go to your billing page. Uh, if you go up to either, if you're using the new view, you click settings or you just go to the little gear icon and hit billing as long as you're an administrator. And it'll tell you on that main page what billing plan that you're on. Let's see here. Let's see a little bit about doc, doc down fillable assert organizers. Uh, we'll see uh, some of those things that come from assert themselves. Uh, we have to work in coordination with them. We have an integration with them. We're, we're great friends with Intuit. And we just got acquired Docdown yesterday. So I think a lot of that's going to be learning. Let's kind of move forward a little bit. If these don't get specifically answered, that's OK. If you have any questions, just send them in to us, and we'll make sure that you guys get them answered. If I don't get to your answers, because I think we're about over 100 questions so far. <laughs> um, couple questions around is there going to be an additional cost for the request docs version 2 no if you're on those plans that already have request docs that'll just be included in what you're paying today um, what about emails with multiple people uh, you have the capability of sending request doc to, to multiple people simultaneously you just copy in their email similar to how you send them an email today the outlook is an exe file which is an executable and as we look through that, I think I've touched a majority. Um, can you review the document request feature? A couple people are asking me to do that. You know what? I'll go ahead and, and steal the, the show one one last time here. And, uh, and I'll kind of talk through this right here. Let me share my screen one last time. Because a couple people just want a quick refresher. And that's absolutely what we're here for. I'm going to make myself the presenter. I'm going to share my screen. Go ahead and share this one right here. Hopefully you guys can see my request docs screen. I navigated from my home here to the request docs button and I can view my templates. This is where all the magic happens. If you wanna add a new template, you go ahead and add the name. And it's very simple to just go ahead and we'll call this one again, Montana. Sorry, I keep on using your name today. No problem. And we're gonna, and we're gonna say this is for a tax engagement and administrators get notified on this one. And what happens is you just come here and you add whatever file that you want. So if I have the what's new, what's coming webinar picture, I can say that one's required. And then file one, file two, et cetera. The change that we'll do within the questionnaire is there'll be another section down here that just says add question. So once I've saved those changes in that template, I can then utilize it. So in this case, I'm gonna use my individual template for the purpose of the quick demonstration. I'm gonna say request doc the 3M, and I'm going to utilize the individual template that's set up for my income tax engagements for 2021. And so here I can see the list of all of those. And if I wanted to send this to multiple, so if I also wanted to send this to Abbott Laboratories, and then we'll see if there's anything that starts with an FR. I can also send this to Johnson. I can send multiple of these at the same time. So each of these clients independently will have access to that request doc. So sorry for stealing the show there for a second. Just wanted to give a quick uh, reminder there. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm going to pass presenter back over to you. 
And we, I know that I know that we're a little over time yeah. at this point. So <laughs> that's what I, I was I, about to say. I think we're, we're right at time. There were a lot of questions that came through. Know that if we didn't address your question here, you will get an email follow up. You will hear from us um, by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, so thank you all for your time. Thank you for joining us today. We will send out that recap email that will have a link to the recording that we just uh, presented, as well as the slide deck and the links to the webinars that we have coming up. Again, thank you for your time, and we look forward to our next What's New, What's Coming in the next quarter. Have a great day, everyone. All right. Thanks, guys.